Welcome to this webinar on trading gold on behalf of Hantech Markets brought to you by Signal Center. Please take some time to read the risk warning and disclaimer. In this webinar, we're going to cover off a few factors that influence gold and how it's traded. Trading gold has fallen in and out of fashion over the years. Uh, the influencing factors we're going to cover off the key drivers mainly focusing on the US interest rates and the US dollar and why they affect the price. The world has long valued and, and uh, treasured gold. In fact, gold has been used in human commerce since the societies of the ancient Middle East over two and a half thousand years ago, making it the oldest form of money still recognized today. Gold's long track record as a store of value despite wars natural disasters and the rise and fall of great empires means that it's generally seen as the ultimate safe haven asset. While gold has generally held its value for centuries, traders' interest has been mixed in recent years. From the early 1980s until the early 2000s, there was little interest in trading safe haven gold amidst the strong, stable economic growth and high-flying stock markets. As a result, gold generally traded between three and five hundred dollars an ounce for over 20 years between 1982 and 2002. Interest in gold grew steadily through the 2000s before exploding with the great financial crisis in 2008. Gold prices rose in sympathy, hitting an all time high initially in 2011, around nineteen hundred dollars before the all time high was uh, put in place in 2020 after we saw the uh, pandemic rock the world even as uh, recently as recent times the russia ukraine uh, crisis has uh, resulted in gold moving higher to previous highs around 1975 dollars gold is one of the most difficult financial assets to really value it was initially pegged against the dollar. It's similar in currency like the US dollar or the euro because it's durable, portable, uniform across the world and widely accepted. However, unlike these more commonly traded currency, gold is not supported by an underlying economy of workers, companies and infrastructure. In other ways, gold is more similar to a commodity like oil or corn because it comes from the ground and has standardized physical characteristics. Unlike other commodities though, the price of gold often fluctuates independently of its industrial supply and demand. More recent drops suggest gold may be losing some of its previous luster. In fact, about 10% of the world's gold is used in industry, primarily in electronics due to its conductivity and anti-corrosive properties while 90% uh, of the rest of the world's gold is either made into jewellery or held for investment purposes. Because of the dynamic, the emotions and behaviour of traders tend to drive major trends in the yellow metal. With, with gold more than any other assets, traders seem to be polarised between die-hard gold bugs, who believe that gold should be somewhere in the region of $10,000 an ounce, because central banks around the world are debasing their currencies and bearish traders who assert that gold is just a barbaric relic of the past and should be worth closer to $100 an ounce. As the chart shows, uh, the gold bugs view developed into a bit of a mania back in uh, the mid to late 2000s. Uh, after a uh, decent sell-off down to about the thousand dollar mark uh, support was found and interest uh, grew again uh, through the uh, the late uh, 2010 to 20s while hitting an all-time high at 2074 as this chart shows uh, and more recently we can see the spike higher based on the Ukraine Russia crisis historically one of the most reliable uh, determinants of gold's price has been the level of interest rates, the real interest rates, or the interest rate basically less inflation. If you think about it, this relationship is straightforward. 
While interest rates are low, investment alternatives like cash and bonds tend to provide a low or negative return, pushing investors to seek alternative ways to protect the value of their wealth. On the other hand, when real interest rates are high, as we're seeing now interest rates starting to move higher, stronger returns are more possible in cash and bonds and the, the appeal of gold uh, with uh, a few industrial uses diminishes. One easy way to see a proxy for real interest rates in the United States, the world's largest economy, is to look at the yield on Treasury, treasury inflation protected securities. One of the biggest points of contention for gold traders is the true correlation between gold and the US dollar. Because gold is priced in US dollars, it would be logical to assume that the two assets are inversely correlated, meaning that the value of gold and the dollar move opposite to one another. In simple terms, it takes fewer dollars to buy an ounce of gold when the value of the dollar rises, and it takes more greenbacks to buy an ounce of gold when the value of the dollar is lower. However, it has also shown a tendency to spike rapidly in periods of financial stress, such as the great financial crisis in 2008-2009, and the beginning of the first iteration of quantitative easing in the mid 2010s. This is because traders will buy gold and the US dollar as a safe haven assets in periods of uncertainty. Traders who've traded on uh, gold on the assumption that gold and dollar are inverted would have encountered a couple of periods of tough market conditions and likely losing trades over the past few years. Gold's correlation with the US dollar is one crucial piece of the puzzle but as we noted above, there are many other factors that drive gold's value. Thank you and thank you for watching and listening to this webinar and hope it's been informative.